that? The Porsche 911 GT3 Touring in this 992 generation. What exactly is it? The 911 GT3 is the lightweight version of the model lineup. For example, CFRP hood, also lightweight windows and so on. So many different measures and 200 kilograms or 400 pounds of weight savings ready to race then. The GT3 Touring is then again taking a little bit off of the super aggressive look. For example, we have a lower bumper in vehicle color and there's also no fixed big rear wing. So the 911 GT3 Touring is still as ready to race as the normal GT3, but a little bit more subtle. So the race car in disguise. Well, but it of course does still have a very sporty look after all. Look at that lower area here in this mesh grill and also here this special hood with these air outtakes. By the way, here in the front you can see it really has coolers in the front behind it. Lamps LED or optional here the matrix LED, an interesting daytime running light four dot structure. And you'll find the hazard lights or turning indicators in the lower area each. And hazard lights or the turning indicators in the rear look also quite fancy, don't they? Well, the side profile, the 911 has always been about that, 4 meters 57 or 180 inches. And here for the GT3, we have 20 inch wheels in the front, forged wheels. And look at that here also, how they are tightened. This is awesome work, bigger brakes and also in the rear, then 21 inch, so a little bit bigger and my how massive they are, of course, a typical 911 shoulder. Gentian blue is the color for today. A very nice Thomas blue. Yeah, I mean, Thomas blue is rather some brighter blue colors. This one is not the darkest blue color, but I would always say it counts as Thomas blue, right? So um, Enzian, it would, by the way, be the German name for it. Such a beautiful side profile, always a 911, and the chrome contrast works very well. Here also with the 911 GT3 Touring. So once again, you see from the side profile, you could say, yeah, maybe that's a normal 911, but I can tell you in the driving part. This is something out of this world. Look forward to that. Wow, look at that three quarter rear perspective. So massive, light strip all the way across the vehicle. Then lower part, centralized two pipe, sports lightweight exhaust. Diffuser shoot and this vehicle really sucks itself onto the ground on the racetrack G3 Touring Batch. That's the main difference here now. Not the fixed wing with the manual control like in the normal GT3 we've shown you in the studio, for example. This one here has the foldable wing and has a more elegant appearance. But is it a 911 for posing? No, it is not. This here, the GT3, is a 911 for races. I will show you in the driving part and top speed. 320 kilometers an hour or 200 miles an hour and to 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour 3.4 and 3.2 seconds so 3.4 to the kilometer figure and 3.2 to the miles figure massive performance from this four liter flat engine six cylinder 510 horsepower naturally aspirated of course it has a different sound way different sound than the normal turbocharged ones I love that, it has a more natural experience while accelerating. So I'm really looking so much forward to drive this one here now. Well, this service opening is the only thing we have to have somewhat of a glimpse of the technology here for the RSS, here just for the fluids and so on. Servicing is done from underneath. This is the car key. Open the front hood with that one. And here, when you open the vehicle, you can see here the door handles fold out just like in any other 911 model. The haptical feeling here of this one is not too good, I have to say, and door closing sound, yeah, okay, but nothing special. Then, inside of the doors, we have a special structured material right here. That's interesting, it's also been found here throughout the hood in the front. GT3 entry badge right there. And look at that, special bucket seats, but they are actually optional. You start with normal sport seats and there yeah, you can go with these then when you really want to go to the racetrack, which you should in this vehicle. And here on the inside we have fabric, both available for the normal sport seat and also here for the bucket seat. Of course, way to go to have the sportiest and most breathable material. Interior overview, not too much screaming out, sporty orientation and there are really some very, very nice and unique features here for the 911 GT3. We also still have a manual AC unit, but 
yeah, it's hard to reach it actually. So we know in the normal 911 there is this brown shaver automatic shifting lever and then you can easily reach them because it's just shorter. On the other hand, it's cool to have a proper shifting lever and even if you have the automatic transmission, it looks kind of manual, although it's the dual clutch. So uh, yeah, it's also a very cool feature, isn't it? Small and sporty steering wheel with control buttons here. Left side for the volume and right side, for example, picking up the phone also to control something of these digital instruments. You have here analog in the middle part with the classic rev meter, but then digital parts on the outside. Let's take a look at that. And here we go, left and right. You can actually adjust what you want to see then there. Here on the right side, also the, for example, visualization for the driving mode. But there's also a special track screen available for the 911 GT3. And that then, for example, shows the temperatures and so on. So yeah, you can use it. Of course, you don't have to. But in this track screen, you will also have you know, special gauges for you know, the, the shifting process and so on. Here, yeah, this function is very important the lift function, you will need this because if you don't use it, a normal basement garage or a normal hump on the road or something is damaging the lower body. And then here, suspension settings, you can make it stiffer also right here. And really these buttons are nicely knurled here with metal and also give a nice clicking sound and so on. I really like these. Oh, and I like this brushed style here as the decoy element. Well, a racy seating position here and steering wheel up and down, in and out, great position to find here, really racy. You can put these bucket seats actually up electronically like this. So if you're a little bit you know, smaller than me, so this also might fit. Usually tall people put it all the way down and with one meters A6, six with one, still enough half or headroom left. And you know, the angle is quite steep and it stays fixed like this, but it's totally fine. It's supposed to be like that for shoulder support and also that you can apply, you know, pressure on the brake and really have something against your back. A lot of people drive, you know, with the back part of the seat all the way back. Yeah, and that's actually not that safe for driving then. So this is the you know, more professional seating position. These bucket seats here are, of course, not that comfortable long term. Mm, they are also the normal sports seats available. They're also available with fabric. When you go for the fabric inside, it will be more comfortable in either case. If the bucket seats or the normal seats are better for you, depends on race track or not. And of course also sometimes the sport air seat can be more comfortable, but it really depends from person to person. It's really hard. But of course we have to bear in mind, this is a racetrack ready vehicle. It will not give you the best comfort. And lock lock with some titanium. It's of course quite fancy. And yeah, one of the characteristics always of a 911. An infotainment system here, for example, GPS view could be a little bit more responsive for sure. This is a 6.0 system, so it also features now Android Auto. Yeah, I have a smartphone with, you know, Royal iPhone X style, so this is then the Apple CarPlay integration. And um, the sound is, let's say, rather somewhat basic. It doesn't have the most sophisticated sound system here, but yeah, it's still somewhat okay. And the Apple CarPlay integration looks like this, using all the way off the screen. And of course, you have here some more features here, for example, right there, here, and there we go. When I change the driving modes, also the characteristics of the spoiler and so on, or the um, sport exhaust system, they change. And here underneath the armrest, you have the charging ports here, two USB-C connectors uh, are hidden underneath here. And yeah, you see, I stored everything in here, also with the key and stuff. Um, yeah, and then it, you know, you can put it down, but it falls down automatically half, so not the best storage solution. By the way, you can exchange this one here with a real cup holder, so this is possible. Um, at the moment, it's right here in the glove box. So look at that. So this is then a proper cup holder indeed. I would prefer this one definitely because the other one then for the passenger side is right here. And for the rear, you do not have a bench, but just some additional storage area, but yeah, storage area. You shouldn't put things in there that can fly around and hit you because if you drive really agile, you better be careful. And how could it be different here in the front? Yeah, it has a frunk, although it's not an electric vehicle. <laughs> That's rare nowadays. But it easily can also house here a cabin trolley, so that works very well. Have you heard that? You hear 
the stones in the wheel arches special all to GT3. Welcome to Thomas's performance driving lounge today. Porsche 911 GT3 Touring. Yeah, you should better activate the, the horn right now because hell is going to break loose. So we start from 30 kilometers an hour in the track mode and let's see how fast it goes. Let's go. That was 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Of course, I won't overtake these uh, fellows in here. And, but maybe that's uh, the very right, you know. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Have you heard that? So the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers an hour, 3.4 seconds to 60 miles an hour at 3.2 seconds. Whew. Yeah, with this dual clutch transmission here, you're a half second faster because everything is just working way better. You, it just works better than you would do it your own. Oh, they're getting off, so I can speed it up now again. That's <laughs> more oh my God. That was like a 100 to 200 sprint. Holy freaking sh show. I need to turn up, uh, turn up the AC first, it's like, oh my goodness. Wow, I mean, if you ask yourself or me, how different is this one from a normal 911? It feels like a completely different vehicle, really. <laughs> I mean, of course it's the same base vehicle, but this double wish, um, wishbone front axle, look at that. I mean, this is so crazy. It's not a small sports car, you know, but it drives like a go-kart. The, you know, how precise it is from the front axle is absolutely amazing. I often say for sporty driving, rather get a 718 than a 911 because it just feels sportier, midship engine concept and so on. But this one, you know, with the GT3 trim and the special front axle is just absolutely insane and really catches up to smaller sports cars as for the driving and handling. But at the same time, we have this 510 horsepower there from that naturally aspirated 4-liter six-cylinder flat engine. Wow. This is really, get, this is really getting your blood pumping. It's incredible, especially in the track mode. You maybe um, realize that like the red line is at 9,000 revs and 8,400 is at the, is the maximum power. Wow. And by the way, if you put it to normal mode, then shifts up, keeps it a little bit calmer. But in general, this is, you know, far away from calm. Have you seen that? It's absolutely insane how this car, except the steering commands, this is a real track vehicle. It's a race car. You are allowed also to drive on the road and probably you'll be faster than some of the non-legal race cars with this one here. Yeah, if you have almost $200,000 or 200,000 euros to spend. You hear so much more in this car from everything around you. You know, like the small stones in the wheel arches, for example. There's less sound dampening, you know, so you hear more of the engine, but also more from everything. Yeah, and of course suspension. You do lose comfort in everyday driving life, but then again, you get this. Now higher speed. It's like a Nürburgring Nordschleife right here. A little bit careful with these other racing participants here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, oh my goodness. This is something out of this world, really. And 
the precision here at higher speeds. I mean, higher speeds feel like nothing for this vehicle. I can't get over how precise this one is steering and how well it handles. This is it is night and day from from a normal 911. And I mean, a normal 911 handles very well. Yes, we all know that. But this is something completely different. And look at that and. The, the, the steering is so, you know, agile and precise. At the same time, it doesn't feel too unnatural, and that is so astonishing. I mean, once again, here's slalom. That's 80 kilometers an hour, and I can't get over it. This is, I mean, it's really hard for you to explain to feel that because you don't feel the g-force sitting in this vehicle. And when I compare it to other normal vehicles, this isn't even a comparison. So. I mean, I've driven so many sporty vehicles in my life already now and I really wouldn't have thought that something still astonishing, you know, astonishes me that much. This is absolutely crazy, this car. So, whew. yeah, that was motorway, autobahn, but we still have our agile driving up the hill to come. This will also be super, super interesting. But I can tell you, if you want to go for this one here, just for the looks and say like, hey guys, look at that, I have a GT3. Don't do it. Do not buy this car. Go for this one if you are using it on the racetrack, period. And why? I'll show you once more right now. But before we get to that, we need the tunnel, right? What was that? Oh, <laughs> what was that? You gotta rewind this. I mean, what kind of sound was that? Can't even. Uh... What the hell? Oh. oh. So after driving this car, you probably need to see your cardiologist. Um, yeah, you need to check your hearing and you also uh, need to see the physio physiotherapist because every physiotherapist in your local surrounding will love these bucket seats and this suspension because they have a lot of jobs to do then for lower back pain. And now, driving up the hill, now the fuel's peak and I also use the manual shifting now. You can also stay in the second gear, of course. Yes, a little bit wet of the road, rear end getting a little bit loose. And this naturally aspirated engine is so cool because it doesn't have this, you know, turbo kicking in. The acceleration is much more linear and therefore feels more natural to me. So here, for example, going back to a normal mode, where there's a building here, we want to be a little bit more silent with respect to the inhabitants here. And then we're passing these houses and I turn it up in the sporting modes again. But I really like the NA engine, you know, definitely feels so much more connected than the turbo and also calmer than in the lower areas in a way because the real power is unleashed then in the high RPM and areas definitely. And look at that, how precise it is in the corners. It feels so cool. Uh, this is also something from the sound, not definitely different. Yeah, this has a proper sound now, and you, I mean, the, the other 911s, you know, they are not that good as for the sound, definitely, but this one is really cool. Now, half in corner. Yes. Just awesome what a flawless sporty driving experience now it's time to compare the mercedes amg gtr and maybe if you search a cheaper ready to race version of a you know of a sports car what about the toyota supra check it here <laughs> 